folks, this is Kelly James Barker with you here on Spotlight on the Ozarks. Our guest tonight is all the way from Branson, Missouri, Mr. Terry Wayne Sanders. Don't go away. We're going to be right back after these messages with Terry Wayne. Hey, I'm Rick Vaughn from Junction Production, and I can help you with all your music and video projects. Whether you're a musician and ready to try a music video, or a songwriter and looking for someone to record your song, I can help. Or if you have a business and would like to promote it on Facebook, or if you're having a special event and would like a keepsake video, give me a call at 417-214-3812 or message me. Please check out Junction Production on Facebook. Hey, Georgette, did you know Kelly's Country Junction comes on this station? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Kelly Lee James is my favorite. Well, a lot of folks say I look like him. <laughs> In your dreams. Hard to believe you're Joanne's little sister. I met you, you were six years old in that sandbox. I should have let that cat cover you up. Homer, oh, listen. You listen. You, no, Don't start on me and you... And we're back with Terry Wayne Sanders from Branson, Missouri. Terry Wayne, it's good to have you on the show, sir. Nice to be here. Thank you so much, Kelly. I'm glad that you came to be a part of our show today. Um, you and I are no strangers. That's true. Uh, five, I think I had five seasons with you with uh, Kelly's Country Junction. Yeah. A lot of good times, good memories. Yeah. A lot of well, a lot of chiggers and yes, stuff. Was oh, out in the woods and running. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Seed ticks. It was horrible. Just horrible. It was pretty bad. So. <laughs> <laughs> I loved every minute of it. So. Yeah, bad. It's no, bad. I'm glad to have you on today. I want you to uh, tell folks, which uh, many many people already know who Terry Wayne Sanders is, mm -hmm. but a lot of them may not, and we want you to know about Branson, Missouri, and about this gentleman right here. So, how long have you been in Branson? Right now, Kelly, I'm in my 39th season to perform in Branson, Missouri. And it's all by design. I've always wanted to be in Branson. Mm -hmm. Now, as a kid, I grew up, I was born and raised in Mountain Grove, Missouri, about oh, 100 miles east of Branson. But we always came to Branson for a vacation. And of course, these are the early days of Branson, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, we could afford to go to Branson because at that time, Silver Dollar City was free. Oh. You had to pay a dollar twenty-five to go into Marble Cave. Wow. Oh yes, those are the early days right there. And so I fell in love the first time we went there. I fell in love with Silver Dollar City. My grandpa Lee Lee Sanders had taken us down there, and I told him, I said, someday I'm going to be here. Wow. And he said, Oh no, no. Uh -huh. And I said, Oh no, I mean a grandpa. Uh -huh. And of course that night we we got to we spent two nights there. The first night we got to go to the Shepherd of the Hills play. Same thing. I was bitten by the bug. Not chiggers, not the ticks, <laughs> but uh, by the acting bug. And I love the play, the drama, the, the fire, everything about it was just great. And then the next night we went and saw the uh, ball number, Jamboree. Mm -hmm. And I said, I want to be in a music show too. And they're like, oh my gosh. Yeah. But honest to goodness, that was early on. That was in 1965. Okay. And of course, you know, I learned over the years, one, get your education. Always. And if anyone's out there listening, get your education because yes. it's going to get you a lot further ahead and a lot quicker if you do it that way. Yeah. And so I uh, got a, a, a BFA, a Bachelor of Fine Arts from uh, SMS then, now it's MSU in Springfield. Mm -hmm. But even before I got my diploma in hand, I was working in Branson. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm still doing all the things I've always loved to do. I'm at Silver Dollar City all 39 years, still working there, playing five characters a day. I'm in a music show called C.J. Newsom's Classic Country and Comedy. This is my third season with them, but I've been now with, I think, a total of about 10 different music shows in Branson, wow. which has been great experience, great fun. And, of course, uh, just like this right now, we're on TV. Uh, I've been on the Vacation Channel with my own show called mm -hmm. uh, Branson Country. Mm -hmm. As Terry the Turn Guy, that's me, friends. I'll tell you all about Branson. <laughs> and so also then I do uh, appearances all throughout the entire area. I work with that Big Cedar Lodge as well as Bass Pro, doing mm -hmm. things for them. And uh, I am truly living the dream, Kelly. Mm -hmm. I'm doing what I want to do every single day and every night. Wow. And that, you know, that makes you feel like getting up in the mornings. Oh, it does. You know, it's it's a challenge because no two days have ever been the same. Now, you might be doing the same jobs every day in yeah, a sense, yeah. but I mean, the audience every day at Silver Dollar, and there's variables if it's the weather, uh, you know, what type of festival's going on at Silver Dollar City, all those things right there. Yeah. So, it's yeah, it's, it's a challenge, but it's great fun. But again, you know, 
you're doing what you love to do. Mm -hmm. So many people get up in the morning, they hate their life, yeah. they hate driving to work to a job that they hate, and honest to goodness, I get in my car and I laugh. I do, I'm thinking, this is gonna be great. Oh, I get to wear this new costume, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna try <laughs> this new line in yeah. the show. And I love that part about the business. Uh, that, that's wonderful, and then, and it tells on whenever somebody sees you doing what you do, because you, you have fun doing it. Oh, absolutely. And you make people feel good. Right. You know, that's why they wanna see you. I look on your Facebook, and uh, man, I don't know how many people that, that will hit on your Facebook saying, oh, we was there last year, uh, right. we're going to be there right. this year, and we want to see you again. See you it's again. So funny. And, and we always take a picture every year, yeah. and I do, and we watch their kids grow up with, with me and all that, and, and I've got a good surgeon, and that helps. But, well, uh, I need yeah. the number. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, the way I got hooked up with you, I think, now you might remember better than I, but it seemed like Barry Wynn, who was a musician, singer, mm -hmm. uh, you already had him with your, your uh, uh, team up here, you yeah, know. Yeah. And Barry said, hey, Terry, we've got this thing going on over there in Diamond, Missouri. And I said, where the thunder is Diamond, Missouri? <laughs> and he said, no, it's Kelly James, and he's got this show, man, and he's doing these things. And it's sort of like hee-haw, because, you know, we got comedy, we got music. And uh, somehow, I think we ended up, I gave him my number, which he gave to you, then you called me, and it, it all yeah. worked out. Yeah, well, I had seen you on the YouTube right. you know, stuff, right. and I said, wow, this guy's really funny. I said uh, to uh, uh, Barry, I said, yeah, I'd like to visit with him. So Kathy, the butler, the producer of the show, right. you know, her and I got together and called and come over and meet, was meeting with you, and we had a meeting, and then yeah. you said, yes, you'd do the show. And then five seasons, you yeah, know. It five seasons later, yeah. And I can't think of anybody that uh, we've had more fun to do the show with. You oh, know? it's always been fun. I, it really was, you know, all those years. But, you know, uh, the thing that I like, the way, the style that you did, uh, because everybody works differently, different directors, different approaches, all those things. Uh, you would have great ideas. And sometimes you had a formal script. Here's what we're going to do, the actual dialogue. And sometimes it would be just... Here's an idea. Here's like what I wanted to start with. Uh, here's where we're going in the middle, and this is how we need to end this. Let's just improvise. <laughs> yeah. And for an actor, you know, that's such a, a challenge. And also, we're under the clock. We've got to have it done. We got to do it. You know, let's yeah. do this. Thing. No, not button in. But people didn't understand that we shot that show in one day. Oh yes. Every episode was right. just one day, and it should have took a week at least oh, well, and, absolutely, to man. did it the way it should have been done. <laughs> but, boy, we were like eat a peanut butter sandwich and get back out there or get exactly. back in yeah, here. Yeah, so. we'll film this, but you guys. Go change costumes. We'll get that done. That oh, absolutely! So. And that's yeah. That's what I like about this business, you know, because you never know who you're going to meet, you know. And that has happened to me so many times in Branson. Uh, early on, I was with uh, the Wilkinson Brothers. It's the second show I was in at nighttime. The first show was called the Toby Show. Shad Heller, who was the uh, blacksmith and the mayor of Silver Dollar City, mm -hmm. uh, he had this little place called the Wilderness Settlement in Branson, and then uh, he also had a theater called the Corn Crib Theater presenting the Toby show wow. and so Shad my very first year 1980 he asked me he said Terry I've been watching you I like what you do would you be in my show wow. and so then I did that for three years and I was with the Wilkinson brothers and this family came up at intermission and said uh, well we sure like the way uh, uh, you do that comedy stuff have you ever done uh, TV commercials why yes I have I hadn't yeah. but I said yes I have <laughs> and they said well we have a furniture company down in uh, Memphis uh, Memphis, Tennessee, yeah. really across the line over there in uh, in uh, in uh, Mississippi, and I said sure. So uh, we worked out the logistics. I, they would fly me down, and I would do uh, their radio spots, TV spots, and on the third Saturday of every month they had this big sale. So I'd go down there and dress up as several characters, just entertaining the people yeah. who were waiting in line to buy furniture. Now Kelly. We've been around the block a couple times, but I in my entire life had never seen people who camped out overnight to buy furniture. But he had such amazing sales and everybody knew it was a great deal. Wow. And so I'd go down there and I'd entertain the folks, you know, and you're the guy from the TV thing. Yes, I am. So, you know, there was just things like that where you get another job, you know, just on the side, you know, it's what you call supplemental income. You've done that a lot, haven't oh, you? Oh, absolutely. I mean, because like one job will get you another job. That's absolutely, what, yeah. Uh, I mean, that's what happened here is Barry started working with us and right. then he said, Hey, you gotta get Terry Wayne Sanders on, you know. And so oh, yeah. I'm like, okay, oh, it worked out uh, great. Five years of it, you know. That yeah, was fun. Yeah, five seasons. You did five out of the six seasons. Yeah. So, um, 
What about, I wanted to ask you real quick, you were talking about your grandfather. Mm-hmm. Um, so no, you probably never do that. Did he get to live to see you do this? Uh, yeah, yeah, he saw me. He knew that you know, I was doing the, the Silver Dollar City thing and all that. Oh. Uh, the, the greatest, one of the highlights of my career was in 1989. Uh, the producers of Hee Haw had come down to Branch and they were looking for new blood. And so they came, they saw me at the Brashler Music Show. Okay. And we had a nice visit after the show. And I thought, well, you know, if they like me, fine. If not, you know, I'm still working. Doesn't right, matter. Right. And then, sure enough, the next day, uh, my boss from Silver Dollar called my house and said, uh, those guys from Hee Haw here, they want to talk to you. I said, no, no, I saw them last night. No, no, they want to see you here. So anyway, long story short, uh, they saw me out there. They uh, uh, gave me a business card. They said, call this number. So there you go. And the rest was history. The, two weeks later, I, had, I flew down to Nashville, Tennessee, and I filmed 13 episodes of Hee Haw. Wow. So there you go. You never know, friends. So there you go. Yeah, no, and but unfortunately, you did the last season, wasn't it? The last uh, it was time. next to last season. Next to yes. last season. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And when we come back, though, Kelly, I've got a story about that. The next to last season. Good, because I was I was wanting to talk <laughs> about the hee haw sure. uh, deal, and then you okay. jumped in on it. I was like, you're ahead of my notes. I read your notes. <laughs> <laughs> listen, we'll be right back. We've got uh, some folks we need to go listen to. They're going to talk about us. And, uh, right. Well, not really talk about us, but they're going to talk about some good things, and then we'll come back and continue to talk with Terry Wayne Sanders. I'm Rick Vaughn from Junction Production, and I can help you with all your music and video projects. Whether you're a musician and ready to try a music video, or a songwriter and looking for someone to record your song, I can help. Or if you have a business and would like to promote it on Facebook, or if you're having a special event and would like a keepsake video, give me a call at 417-214-3812 or message me. Please check out Junction Production on Facebook. Hi, I'm Terry Wayne Sanders inviting you to join me and Kelly James Barker on Spotlight on the Ozarks right here. We have a lot of fun. You're going to get some scoop on the Ozarks, things you never heard of before, and stories you can tell your grandkids. That's right. Join us right here on Spotlight on the Ozarks. Here we are at JR's and we've got lots of boots. You want wild and crazy? Or we've got nice brown traditional boots for that good old cowboy. Come on in. You can not only find great Western wear at JR's, but you can find great CDs by Kelly Lee James. My best bet. He's an old bronc rider, just an old bullfighter. Lord, I watched him. Hmm. Where'd that stapler go? I wonder what Terry did with it. Maybe I should call him. What's the number? (laughs) This is the life. Ah, Vacation. No phones, no body. Peaceful and quiet. Just the way I like it. Hello, Emily? Terry. Yes? Yes. I hate to bother you, but where are you at anyway? Hawaii. I'm fine. How are you? (laughs) No, no, it's the state. (laughs) I'm fine. Yep, and we are back with Terry Wayne Sanders. And uh, <laughs> Terry, we just showed a little clip there when you was on the show, and that's where you did a, a sketch where you were uh, on vacation. Yes, yes. The <laughs> boss had left the office and was on vacation. Do not bother me. And of course, uh, the wonderful little uh, Emily Dowd in Estes. 
was yes. the actress that did that part. And then so funny. Rodney Lay, uh, which is Roy Clark's uh, bass player and manager right. for 20 years, he also played in that yeah. episode with you. So. But fun, we had a lot of fun doing that stuff. But now you're talking about Hee Haw. Hee Haw, that's right. Uh, it was, like I say, the fall of 1989. They came to Branson looking for new blood. They found me, and two weeks later, they flew me down to Nashville. Mm -hmm. And very much like your show, uh, Kelly's Country Junction. Only you probably got paid there. They did. <laughs> I was so surprised. Yeah, you're going to pay us for this? Yeah. And it was really my first scale job, union, you know. Yeah. And uh, a good education, honest to goodness. But they, they took great care of us all. They put us up in the nicest hotels, gave us a rent a car, had a food per diem. Uh, but just to see these people, and I remember the first day there was like the welcome back meeting because for them it was like a party. They all live different places and they come in for two weeks to film, 13 episodes. Yeah. And oh my gosh, it was it was all my heroes that I grew up in because there was Grandpa Joe and there's Minnie Pearl and I get yeah. to do scenes with her because they wow. showed me some of the scripts and it was so exciting and uh, uh, for two weeks and it was uh, like I say union so you only worked Monday through Friday and only eight hours a day wow. period otherwise you know then you get all this overtime mm -hmm. and, and all that but I also learned things like uh, I was just waiting because as you know in, in TV hurry up and wait well, they have people, yes, property yeah. masters, people who have a job to do. And so it's like, oh, well, I'll help them. So I started to move. Oh, no, don't touch that. You have to be union to uh -huh. touch that. Oh, wow. I said, well, you're kidding me. No, 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 no. So I learned a lot. I learned but, that, uh, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, you know, it was great fun. They were all great people, uh, good stories. Uh, uh, and after we work, you know, we go out and have a good time. Mm -hmm. So it was fun. Uh, on the on the side, you know, it's like, okay, let's all go to the hotel for a little while and have a nice time. You have not lived. Friends, you have not lived until you've seen Grandpa Jones in a Speedo. I'm just saying right now, okay? There you go. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. We were in the hot tub and can't talk about it. Anyway. <laughs> I hope not. Uh, now, you were talking about this. Now, my grandfather, Lee Sanders, who saw some of my, my success, this really was the, the pinnacle, if you will, uh, of at, at that time uh, of my career because he was well known. Oh, yeah. And... Uh, so my mother, that was in 1989, uh, they filmed it in 89, they aired it in 1990. In 1990, it's when my wife and I uh, became uh, with a child, and our first child was born on December 7th, 1990. Wow. And then, of course, my mother, who was always my biggest fan, uh, in 1990, she uh, had uh, surgery, found out that she had a tumor. And so uh, they took care of that, and they, we were all excited. They, oh, we got it all, good. And then the news was, well, we did a biopsy. Mm -hmm. and this is the type of cancer that will probably come back. And we're like, oh no, how long? They said it usually takes about six months, and honest to goodness, six months to the day. Mm -hmm. Got sick, went to the hospital, they did some more tests, it was back and it was terminal. Mm -hmm. And so my mother though, it was just this horrible roller coaster, if you will, because uh, great job, hee haw, everybody has seen the show. Uh, I'm a father, I'm gonna give my mother the first real grandchild, that type of thing. Yeah. And then we had this, this bad news and all that. But my mother, she uh, lived uh, for nine months uh, with the, the cancer that we knew uh, that she had. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but she saw this success and so, and that was part of the legacy right there. She said, honey, you, as you know, the show must go on. Mm -hmm. So whether I'm wow. here or not, you've got to do that. That's you so. also had that little bitty boy who's wow. looking up to you. So you've got to do what you got to do. Wow. So uh, tough life lessons, but you know, uh, I, you know, yeah. I just say thank you, God. Yeah, mm -hmm. she got to see her grandson. Yep. She got to see you on Hee Haw, right. which, like you said, was uh, for our generation, that was the, and for what we like to do with the, any country music or comedy, that was the pinnacle of, oh, that, was, was. that was the Grand Ole Opry of comedy. Absolutely. For, for oh, it was people. wonderful. So, yeah. and, and, you know, uh, country people, the country music stars, mm -hmm. are very different than movie stars. I'm going to tell oh, you that yes. right now. Yes, yes. Um, they just give from their heart. And whenever we found out about my mom's situation and we knew it was terminal, uh, we pulled all the stops. Let's do what we can to make every day good for my mom. And so I called Roy Clark and he called up my mother and he talked for the longest time. But then he sent a, a prayer cloth from his church wow. that they had prayed for. And they said, now, Barb, put this, you know, and Minnie Pearl, who was a cancer survivor, mm -hmm. she called my mother and had great long talk with her and uh, just gave her great encouraging words. And that's what we did during that whole nine months of, you know, this, this badness. And it yes. was bad. Yes. Uh, and people out there, you know exactly what I'm talking about, where you want to make something horrible better you know yeah. easier to deal with you yeah. know and so i was so amazed at everyone who uh, in the country music business who did all they could 
you know. Uh, I spoke uh, with some folks, and Dolly Parton sent a beautifully signed, inscribed picture to my mom, you know. And Kenny Rogers, he had come out to Silver Dollar City, and wow. we talked, and he made sure that he got some stuff to her. It was just absolutely amazing. Was, so, uh, yes. so yeah, and that's what I love about country music and, uh, and the, the folks who do it mm -hmm. and who try to make it happen, and uh, they also go above and beyond. They do. And... Yeah, as you can't say enough about somebody that does those type of things for right. for you know you a fellow person in in the in the business and what amazing stories. So um, you know I'm going to start doing some music other than country. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to start going back to folk music. Folk music, folk really? music. Yeah, back with the uh, mamas and the papas and oh, that type. Yes. I'm putting my group together now. Are you serious? So, yeah, I oh play. I play banjo. I play some bongos. I'm a, so a lot of folks are like, uh, "Wow, you know, you do country." And I said, "Well, I, I've enjoyed country, but yeah. also when I was just a kid, I did orchestra oh music. So I mean, I'm not, you know, a great orchestra leader, but uh, I love that kind of music oh and stuff. But um, okay, comedy. Going back to when you started working there in Silver Dollar City, um, you you named a show. Was it the Ball Knobbers? Ball Knobbers. Yep. Were they the first there, or was it Presley's? The Ball Numbers were the first show in Branson. Mm -hmm. The first show on the Strip would be the Pressies. So actually, they were the second show in town, the Pressies were. Okay. The Ball Numbers were first. Wow. Yes. So you got in on the bottom line <laughs> of it. So you should have called me, Terry. Because <laughs> at your, that point in 89, when you're doing all that, I was out in uh, Knoxville and, and working in Pigeon Forge. Oh, my goodness. But So you're back here mm -hmm. making a good legend, see, of yourself. <laughs> I'm out there struggling, playing the banjo. And we, I played the banjo at a place where they pan for gold. Oh, my gosh. And I walked oh around in these overalls <laughs> and played, oh, Susanna. <laughs> so, yeah, we had a lot of fun, but yeah. I didn't make much money which brought me back to this part of the country right. but now what's funny about what you just said right there was I'm down here on the set of Heat Hop with all these stars they have performed for thousands of people making thousands of dollars <laughs> and I had more of the stars of Heat Hop come up to me and say Terry do you think I can make it in Branson Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they they did go to and Branson. they did yeah. No. Matter of fact, Roy Clark put in the Roy Clark Celebrity Theater. He was the and first big one. That, by the time I got around Branson, right. he was the first big name that right. I got to see. All right, yeah, because there were some names that would come into town, like uh, the Bob Lakes Theater, which would be Bob Mabe of the Mabe Brothers, mm -hmm. uh, formerly of the of course the Bald Number Show. Okay. But Bob went out and put out his own theater. But he was the first man who I think really brought in the the uh, known talent mm -hmm. to Branson. He brought in uh, Ronnie Millsap, Loretta Lynn, people like. Fact, mm -hmm. you know, just one night thing. Oh wow, let's see what they do. And yeah. oh, they had a great time. You know, they just thought that was great because Branson. You know, and you've been in Branson for thirty nine years. This thirty nine years. Now my wife was born right there in Branson at Skaggs Hospital, and she's got the scars to prove it. But uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, thirty nine years. So uh, I mean, you were there working when you and you got to see Mel Tillis come to town. Yes, yes, Mickey and Gilly Mickey came Gilly, to town. All these people and uh, so many amazing. Andy I, Williams. Andy now that's Williams. what was yes. another turning point for Branson because you know, we were known as the country music capital of the world mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden uh, a few other names who were not really known as country music kind of in the middle easy, of the road easy listening right type exactly yeah. and then here comes Andy Williams and the only reason Andy King was his brother was already working there his brother uh, had booked people like Ray Stevens okay. and Ray got Ray with his own theater in there yep. people like that and his brother said Andy you got to come over here and check this out Andy came down and fell in love with what he saw wow and uh, so he made the decision, told his wife and told all of his friends, we're leaving New York, pack it all up, or we're going to build a theater in Branson. And they're like, you are crazy. Are you, are, you, are you nuts, Andy? But he said, no, no, no. He said, these are the people. He goes, I'm an Iowa boy. I'm watching all those license plates. I said, Iowa, that was Newton County. I, wow. He knew right then. And he designed an actual theater. Now, uh, sometimes we say things that can ruffle feathers where we don't mean to. Mm -hmm. Andy had made a few statements that upset some Bransonites and it was misinterpreted because he knew what we already had done mm -hmm. but he was going to bring it to a new, whole new level okay. and so whenever he came into town he hired architects from outside of Branson mm -hmm. who knew how to put together a theater oh. not a metal building uh -huh. with a little bit of a rake and you put some seats in there hey, watch it go. watch <laughs> it <laughs> <laughs> but you know that was it ruffle 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 but, yeah that's what happened and so sure enough and of course um, 
beautiful facility. And for a while after they got his theater completed, he lived in his dressing room, 1,500 square foot dressing room. That's a house. Wow. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. So that, and so while they were building his home, that's, that's what happened. They uh, uh, lived there until the house was finished over at Point Royale. It's amazing. It man. really is. Uh, it's so many stories that you have. Well, you need to write a book. Oh, I can't. I'll be sued. I know too much dirt. I well, do. Just make sure they don't, they don't release it until after you die. There you go. And, See, yeah. and that's make right. sure all the, all the proceeds goes to your right. wife and the kids because they'll all outlive you probably. Oh, yes. So, oh, yes. Absolutely. Yeah, that's going to happen. Oh, but, <laughs> well, Terry, I tell you, it's been a pleasure having you here tonight. Well, thank you for having me, Kelly. Really, and, this has um, been great fun. We're uh, going to go to another commercial here in just a little bit. Do you have a story that you can tell in about a minute and a half? About what? Yeah, I don't uh, know. You know, I've always been inspired by so many people. Who? And that's a good question that people ask me. Well, who tell them all the them. people that you that you play. <laughs> oh yeah. Different uh, yeah, no. Uh, I do Bounty Five now over there at the. Uh, okay. Oh my. Okay. <laughs> C.J. Newsom's classic country and comedy show on Highway 76 Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday nights right there in Branson. I play. Barney, I play Homer Lee, I play Joan Rivers, what, what, I know what you're thinking, isn't she dead? Yes, I'm much better. So yes, I play about seven characters at the, the show, so there you go. Let me say, uh, you remember Cousin Kenny uh, oh, yes. Gordon from yes. the College Country Junction, he was in love with your character, Joan Rivers. Oh yes. He goes, I know it's a guy, I have to keep telling myself, this is a fella. <laughs> <laughs> I just, this looks so beautiful, I love Joan he Rivers. Really, and he kept saying to me the whole time. So we're going to end on that right there. Keep yeah. that in mind, how good that Joan Rivers was. All oh, right. yes. Well, what we're going to do, we're uh, visiting with Terry Wayne Sanders. We're going to go to uh, commercial, and we'll come back and wind it up. Uh, so we'll be back right after this message. <laughs> oh, that can't come on. <laughs> Hi guys, look what we've got. Full case of Montana silversmith buckles and jewelry. Everything a cowgirl would want or cowboy. Hats, hats, and more hats. We've got hats if you need hats. Here at JR's Western Store. Come in, we'll suit you up. Hello folks, my name is Jason Richeson. I'm the lead guitar player for Kelly's Country Junction and I'm here to tell you about MJT Guitars, made in Carthage, Missouri. If you would like a custom made vintage style guitar, then you need to talk to Mark Jenny. He'll help you out with the style, feel and sound you're looking for. They specialize in custom age finishes and are priced affordable, made with you in mind for the perfect sound and fit. MJT Guitars, made for the working man. Okay, and we are back. Uh, we're laughing as Terry Wayne Sanders uh, said, "What we should be doing is switching chairs every time we we come back." <laughs> like this. Weren't they in the other chairs before that? Uh, yeah. What happened there? It was the earthquake. That's right. Well, what I could do is just turn the picture around. See, there you so go. I could do that. Reverse it. Yeah. Sure. Well, yeah. <laughs> the, and the pen will be in this hand. So. <laughs> But uh, Terry, it's been a uh, real pleasure to have you on because uh, I already you. know you and I knew you were very funny and asked you to be on the show. Um, uh, you know, I knew I wouldn't be getting anybody that, that's any more well known or any better. <laughs> Don't know about that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah especially here in the Ozarks. And that's what the name of the show is, is Spotlight on the Ozarks. Ozarks. And that's you so, and folks like you. Tell some of the folks in Branson about us, and oh, maybe we can get yes. some of them to come. Get them come up here. You bet. We'll bring a bus load. There you go. So now, yeah. something to look forward to right there. We'll start charging them. If we're going to bring a bus load, we'll just do a show. I'll do some folk music. See, there you go. Get up the bongos. Yeah, yeah that might be comedy in itself. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, and we're Facebook friends again. Yes, we are. Uh, yes, and I love Facebook. You know, it's a great way to touch the world. You know, and there's there's enough badness out there in the world, and even on Facebook, every now and then something bad happens. But I I make a daily posting, and I I love this because I always try to find something that touches my heart or something that's going on in my life, and I keep thinking, Lord, I hope this helps someone else. And it's so nice whenever people say, I needed this one today. Thank you so much. Yes. Or I get reconnected with people that knew I knew them whenever they were little. Now they're all grown up with their own family. Families. Yep. But uh, it's been great to reconnect with you, of course, uh, you know, with the, the years of uh, the Country Junction show, but also here on your show. But thank you for having me there, Kelly. Appreciate well, it so we much. We got you just in time because uh, your season. year, your season is Good next week. Awesome. So oh, yeah. Go ahead real quick, and it's my show, 
Uh, they're telling us we need to probably wind down, but wind you tell down. everybody what you're doing in 2018. All right. Come and see me at Silver Dollar City. I'm there five days a week as five different characters. Also at nighttime, Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday, come and see me at the Americana Theater uh, in the C.J. Newsom's Classic Country and Comedy Show. A lot of fun, 730 at night. So there you go. There you And everywhere else. Big Cedar, uh, let's see, MDA, everywhere. I've got five jobs this year. <laughs> you stay busy on how you do it. Uh, uh, okay, and I'm just going to say that uh, real quick. Had a lady one time to recognize me on the show, and she said uh, uh, her gra- her grandson was with her. Said this that's Kelly from Kelly's Country Junction, and she looks at me and goes, "I sure miss Hee Haw." <laughs> so, folks, this is called uh, Ozark Spotlight. Spotlight, Spotlight, Spotlight on the Ozark. Ozark. Terry, Long Terry, day. straighten up, Terry White. Oh, yeah. It is Spotlight on the Ozarks, and uh, my guest has been Terry Wayne Sanders from Branson, Missouri. And I want to mention five times. Five-time comedian of the year. Of the year. Yes, yes. What an honor. Let's make it six. Okay. Well, I'm working on it. I'm working okay. on it. Join me next time, Kelly James Barker, for Spotlight on the Ozarks.